Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about a classic comedy from 1942, The Palm Beach Story, directed by Preston Sturgis. And that is Colette Colbert, Joel McRae, and um, Rudy Valley on the cover. And The Palm Beach Story opens with a frantic, paced uh, credit sequence uh, in which we see uh, we see maids fainting, we see Claire Colbert gagged and locked up in a closet, people rushing about here and there, uh, all to the William Tell overture, and then to the, um, uh, the to the wedding march, and we see Claire Colbert and Joe McRae uh, getting married, and then it says uh, they and they lived happily ever after, or did they? <laughs> Directed by Preston Sturgis. Um, so they, we get what would appear to be the closing of a comedy we get in the opening. And then Sturgis being a, a master of changing tones in his films, he slows the movie down to a absolute crawl and we get The Weenie King. And The Weenie King is one of those great uh, little characters that, um, that, that are only in the movie for a, little, uh, for a small time, but every Every character in a Preston Sturgis um, uh, movie has something vivid to contribute, but especially the Weenie King. And here is a, a rendition of what the <laughs> Weenie King looked like. It's Robert Dudley, uh, who didn't who didn't have many uh, other uh, significant parts, but he certainly has a memorable one here. He has come to uh, rent a Park Avenue apartment but it's still occupied by um, Claire Colbert, who's hiding out. She owes back rent. Uh, but he, he discovers her hiding, in the, uh, hiding behind the shower curtain and uh, figures out that she owes a lot of money. He's quite taken with her. She's in her wrapper and she looks beautiful. And uh, he, he, he's a millionaire, a first of a series of millionaires in this film. And, and uh, you know, he tells her, "I've got I got more money than I could need. But I'm, a, I'm the Texas Weenie King. Lay off him, you'll live longer." <laughs> Pays off all the debts, the rent, and some extra money. Buy yourself an evening gown, which she does. <laughs> but she's living. Uh, she's married to Joel McRae. He is not bringing home the bacon. <laughs> He's an inventor, and his inventions are panning out. Uh, she thinks that the marriage should. Uh, that they should separate divorce because um, she's just uh, a milestone. <laughs> he corrects her, millstone, not a milestone, around his neck because uh, he's always worried that he's not uh, giving her the lifestyle which she, she really desires. And, and it's time for her to find somebody else who can, who can uh, uh, rich enough to satisfy these, uh, these uh, materialistic desires. So uh, Palm Beach is the place to go <laughs> if you want a divorce, a cab driver uh, tells her. And, but she has no money, no tickets. She's at, at Penn Station. Here's some more millionaires, the Ellen Quill Club, a whole bevy of them. They're drunk. Uh, they adopt her as a mascot. They prove unreliable. Uh, no problem. Here's another millionaire, John D. Hackensacker III, <laughs> played by a delightful Rudy Valley. And, and he's totally smitten with her. He's, he's unmarried, never been married, but he has a sister back down there in Palm Beach called the Princess Sentimalia. And she's played by Mary Astor. And she's been married five times, two of them annulled, uh, John D. is quick to point out. <laughs> and, but she's not currently married. And uh, she's played by uh, Mary Astor with this. She talks real quick, with a, quickly, with a high-pitched voice. I found her hilarious. She thought she was terrible. I, I, it's, I, <laughs> it, it, you, you can't figure it out sometimes in movies. Um, so, and then Joe McRae comes to try to get Colbert back. And uh, um, in, the, in Sturgis's previous film, Henry Fonda was the star. That was a big hit, Henry Fonda and, and Barbara Stanwyck and The Lady Eve. Um, and I would have loved Fonda in this role, played by Joel McRae. Now, he's, he's a fine actor, and he gives, he's, he's very stolid, and, uh, but deliberately so in this film. But I think, I think uh, Henry Fonda, working with Sturgis, again, would have really elevated the film even more uh, as far as humor, humor goes. 
but uh, in, the, in, in the supplements, we learned that, well, Henry Fonda didn't love Preston Sturgis. He liked Preston. He didn't love him. Joe McCray loved him. And Preston Sturgis liked to work with actors who absolutely loved him. So, but we get one of uh, Claire Colbert's finest performances in uh, the Palm Beach story. It's, uh, I, I guess the other two would be her performance with uh, It Happened One Night with uh, uh, Frank Capra and then in Midnight, uh, directed by Mitchell Lyson, who directed a number of her films, and but uh, um, uh, from a Billy Wilder and Charles Brackett screenplay. I would say those are the three top uh, uh, roles that she, uh, performances that she had, comic performances, and she was a great comedian, and, and, and she played it straight. That was her advice always, play it straight. Uh, don't work too hard to get the laughs. The laughs will come. And, and pretty good advice when you're in a Preston Sturgis movie because the comic inventions are, <laughs> are, uh, uh, are, are very rich. And, and, the, and the movie really uh, very overtly uh, confronts an illustration of sexual desire, as in The Lady Eve. Sometimes uh, Press Sturgis could get so much stuff past the censors. Where I, I don't know where they laughing so hard they didn't they didn't realize <laughs> what, what he was doing. But in the Lady Eve it was it's, it was sexual desire versus the need for revenge. In the Palm Beach story, it's sexual desire versus the need for wealth. What's going to win out in the end? So we get another frantic finale um, that Sturgis you know, is, is famous for. And, and in the, the supplements, there's an interview with Bill Hader from uh, Saturday Night Live, and he, he makes a really good point that Sturgis would write himself into a corner. He didn't really care if the ending made any sense at all. And this ending really, even though it comments on the, on the opening credit sequence, I'm not sure it makes much sense. But he didn't care about that. And he compares that to other great comic, comedy writers like Lubitsch, and uh, Billy Wilder, Lubitsch's disciple, where everything in the movie was constructed, every scene was to lead to a very specific ending. And if they needed to change the ending, they would go back and, and recalibrate some of the scenes so that, again, it would lead, uh, lead inevitably to this ending. Sturgis doesn't do that. Uh, also in the supplements, we get an interview with James Harvey, who wrote a great book on the romantic comedies of the 30s and 40s. He gives you a really, a really nice, um, way too short, uh, uh, summing up of Serge's career up to, to and including the Palm Beach story. And then we get a booklet, and it has the artwork. The artwork is, uh, I like it. Uh, some people don't like the artwork on this, uh, but I love it. And it's very consistent with uh, the other criterion, uh, Preston Sturgis, or one of the others, uh, the Palm Beach story. Very, very similar artwork on that. And, um, and then we get an essay by Stephanie Zacharek. Uh, always, I mean, every essay in uh, in, in uh, Sturgis in, uh, uh, in the Criterion Collection are fantastic. And now I just want to show you some more of the artwork. This is the Ellen Quayle Club uh, in their drunken revelry. This is uh, Mary Astor, uh, the millionaire's princess, her sidekick Toto, who <laughs> doesn't speak English, <laughs> and obvious reference to uh, uh, the Wizard of Oz. Here is the Ellen Quayle's uh, hound dogs. They're going hunting. I've already shown you uh, the Weenie King. Um, so all in all, this is just a delightful movie. If you're a Preston Sturgis fan, if you're a Claudette Colbert fan, uh, this is really a, a must-have, I, I think, at least. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody who managed to listen. I really do appreciate it. The comments are welcome. You guys take care.